We need to choke, choke the uh, IRCG and the military arm and the Ayatollahs from this free flow of the uh, money. I gotta go. Okay, thank you. Sir. Right, well. The days of impunity for Tehran and its enablers are over. The murderous regime and its supporters will face significant consequences if they do not change their behavior. Let my message today be very clear. We are watching and we will come after you. Thank you very much. It's The Real News. I'm Mary Matte here in New York City with Ben Norton. We're at the United Against the Nuclear Iran Summit. This is a group uh, that receives heavy funding from neocons like Thomas Kaplan and Sheldon Adelson. Although the exact sources of its funding are murky because the U.S. government has deemed it a state secret, uh, blocking the public release of its donors. Uh, this group is openly against the Iran nuclear deal, uh, campaigned against it, uh, and it's also openly for regime change. So that's why it's striking that a number of senior Trump administration officials are here today, including National, National Security Advisor John Bolton, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, and also the head of the so-called Iran Action Group, Brian Hook. Senator Lieberman, thanks for talking to us. The message that uh, you want to uh, send today at this conference? Well, that Iran remains a real threat. Uh, it, it's uh, in a world that's full of threats. China, Russia, Islamist uh, terrorism. Uh, er, Iran brings them all together. It makes it, to my, in my opinion, the biggest threat to the security of the United States and our allies around the world. Uh, we've turned the corner now. Uh, and uh, while I disagree with President Trump on other things he's done, I really appreciate that he has drawn us out of the Iran nuclear agreement. What about the impact in the interim on the people of Iran? In your uh, comments today, you talked about the currency plunging, yeah. uh, about jobs being lost. Yeah. What's your message to Iranians who yeah. right now are suffering under the reimposition of sanctions? Really, it's, I mean, it, it pains me, but uh, the reality is the, the reason the Iranian people are suffering is because of their uh, government, their regime. I, th I think there's a real uh, restlessness building, more than restlessness, opposition to the regime building in Iran. And unless the Iranian regime changes its ways, there could be another Iranian revolution. The sudden surprise appearance of the Trump administration and the coming to the State Department of Mike Pompeo is definitely a deus ex Second time I've, I've had someone interrupt a speech on this topic, and I, You're I, sick I, of you killing I, people I, in I our remind, name. I remind, you want I peace remind them all. Yeah. Yeah. You're not in the arena. 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 Get out. 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 It's very nice of you all to, uh, to like plan seven hours ahead to get here on time, uh, given the traffic this week. Uh, thank you to, for your being so brave and getting out in all of this. I especially do want to say thank you, by the way, to Senator Lieberman before. Thank you for the invitation, Senator Lieberman. It was most kind of you to include me today. I know, too, that you'll hear from Ambassador Bolton today. Uh, he and I share the President's vision. But Iran's own track record of violating international law is among the worst in the world. It has no regard for international law, borders, or lives. It is therefore incumbent on every country to join our efforts to change the regime's lawless behavior. We want every single country on board. This is among the President's top diplomatic priorities. All Iranians who long for a normal government in Iran should be heard. We will continue these conversations to let the Iranian regime know unambiguously whose side we are on. So we're here with Stephanie. She is an activist with the group World Can't Wait, and she is one of three protesters who were just kicked out of the United Against the Nuclear Iran Summit, uh, protesting a speech by Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. So Stephanie, if you could talk about the message you delivered today. 
Okay, well, earlier in the day when Senator Lieberman, who's the one who introduced Pompeo, spoke, he gave a presentation earlier. He said how he, his prayers were answered when Trump became president and then when he chose Pompeo for Secretary of State. Well, my prayers were not answered if I, if I prayed, but I certainly, whatever anyone would do, that's the worst person we could have as a fascist president and Pompeo as a Secretary of State. So what I wanted to say there was that this whole summit and what they were doing is a push towards war on Iran and to war on the Iranian people and that we have to stop these wars, no more endless wars, endless continuing wars, it's just going from country to country, more and more wars. A big theme today throughout the speeches, including by, by Pompeo that you were rejected from, is just them taking credit and pride in the fact that the sanctions that they've reimposed have crippled the Iranian economy. That, uh, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands are losing their jobs, the currency is plummeting. When, they, when you hear that and when they talk about being on the side of the Iranian people, What's your response? Well, it was, it was really disgusting. They were gloating over it, that how the Iranian people are suffering. All those people out of work, that they can't get medicine, they can't get food, and that this is going to cause them to rise up and overthrow the Iranian regime. But what are they doing to the people? I mean, it's, it's really, it was, it was disgusting. Today I'm pleased to address a subject you all know well, the serious threat posed to the United States and to the world by the murderous Iranian regime. There is bloodshed, chaos, violence, and terror in the regime's arsenal. Anyone who fails to curtail their engagement with Iran in these areas will suffer severe consequences. Enforcement of our sanctions will be aggressive and unwavering. This is a maximum pressure campaign. According to the mullahs in Tehran, we are the great Satan, lord of the underworld, master of the raging inferno. So I might imagine they would take me seriously that I, I, when I assure them today that if you cross us, our allies or our partners, if you harm our citizens, if you continue to lie, cheat, and deceive, Yes, there will indeed be hell to pay. So I'm, I'm with Faraman Kalaya. He is an uh, activist here in the U.S. with the NGO, the NewIran.com. Yes. Uh, your thoughts on this conference today? This was one of the most uh, remarkable and effective uh, events that I've seen. For the past four decades, Iranian diaspora has been trying to get the very voice of the voiceless in Iran back to uh, international community. So this was an opportunity for me to hear back. And uh, it did a wonderful job. Were there any Iranian voices though today in the, on the panel? Ironically, no. But everything that was said, it was part of the, uh, 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 basically the mosaic of the stories and hor horrific stories that the systematic human rights uh, uh, abuses that Ayatollahs have committed in the last four years just to stay in power. What about the calls for sanctions? I mean, uh, do you have family still inside Iran? Yes. And, yes. and do, do they support the sanctions that the U.S. has reimposed? Well, remember, 80% of the economy is controlled by the IRSG, IRCG, uh, which is the the military arm of the Ayatollahs. So, the, uh, yes, seemingly you think that uh, poor Iranians uh, will suffer, but in actuality, uh, nearly 60% of Iranian live close or under poverty line. So, for them, it's worse, yes, but eventually we need to choke, choke the uh, IRCG and the military arm and the Ayatollahs from this free flow of the uh, money. So, so that's the question. I mean, is it is it worth it to you? I mean, even like, so, you recognize that the sanctions will make it even harder for the poor people in Iran. So, is it worth it to you to do that for an outcome that that you, that you think will hurt the regime? Well, listen, uh, you know, th uh, this is this is the uh, this is the dead end that the regime has brought upon himself. Is it worth then working with Saudi Arabia, which executes far more people than even Iran does, and is a far more is is a you know you can't even compare them in terms of uh, Saudi Arabia being an extremist fundamentalist regime? 
I mean, uh, th you make a great point. I mean, I, 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 by no means I condone uh, any kind of uh, uh, auto, uh, autocracy or any kind of rule that is influenced or envisioned by religion, uh, uh, Sharia law. Uh, uh, I think uh, there is a similar scenario with the USSR, if you remember, nearly uh, 1985 or earlier, when it collapsed under its own forces. So that's what we were hoping to achieve within the, uh, the pressure from outside and the, the uh, eventual uh, uprising of the people. So that's going to wrap it up for us here at the United Against the Nuclear Iran Summit in New York City. We heard from National Security Advisor John Bolton saying to the Iranian government, quote, we are watching and we will come after you. Uh, delivering a uh, seems like a pretty strong endorsement of regime change, although the administration that he works for says officially its policy is not regime change. Rather, it wants to basically force the Iranian people to rise up by uh, choking the country via the sanctions that the U.S. has reimposed by pulling out of the Iran nuclear deal. And that was a big theme today, uh, from Bolton to Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, we heard to uh, Senator Joe Lieberman, uh, we heard constant talk about how the sanctions that the U.S. is reimposing are choking the Iranian economy and plunging the currency and hurting normal Iranian people. And it was strange to see that seen as a point of pride, uh, not seeming to take into account the impacts of the Iranian pe on the Iranian people that these sanctions are having already. We're hearing about medicines being in short supply. Interesting that this group is called United Against the Nuclear Iran, and it claims to speak for the Iranian people, but yet on this panel today, throughout the day, there was not a single Iranian voice. Instead, it's a collection of neocons, uh, liberal hawks like Joe Lieberman, although he's pretty indistinguishable from a neocon at this point, uh, and uh, officials from Gulf monarchies. Uh, nobody from, even from the Iranian uh, diaspora that is uh, opposed to the Iranian government speaking today at this conference. Now, aside from Senator uh, Lieberman, we were not able to speak to any other of the uh, speakers or uh, members today of the uh, presenting group, United Against the Nuclear Iran, because speakers were kept from the public and the media. Uh, we wanted especially to speak to members of the United Against Nuclear Iran to talk about where their funding comes from uh, because it is officially a state secret. The U.S. government has prevented that information from getting out, uh, though one of the uh, uh, top funders uh, includes uh, Sh Sheldon Adelson uh, as well as uh, Thomas Kaplan, uh, another uh, neocon billionaire. But who exactly funds? This group, uh, and, and by how much, uh, is unknown, a question we we're not able to get answered today. Reporting for The Real News, I'm Aaron Maté with Ben Norton.